All right, happening this month, the 2023 Valley Fever Walk is taking place February 25th at the Kern County Museum. And here with a preview is Rob Purdy, the Patient and Program Development Coordinator at the Valley Fever Institute at Kern Medical. And of course, we haven't been able to have this in a couple years, so how exciting is it to have the walk so back? It's really good for two reasons. One, it's, it's very important for patients. It's an opportunity for them to get together, talk to other patients who understand what they're experiencing with this disease. And even better, in a sense, is normally this event's always been held in August because we had to wait. We didn't want to wait all the way to August. So we're taking advantage of the beautiful weather in yes. February in Bakersfield. So it's now a February event. So um, we're, we're excited to be able to host it again. And I love that there's a new component here involving dogs. Why is that? So dogs in Valley Fever, uh, unfortunately, have a long history. Um, some breeds are more in fact, impacted than others, but any, any mammal, any animal that breathes air can get Valley Fever. Um, so it's not just about people, it's also about pets. And so we wanted to be able to include dogs this year. And I just love that. So you can sign up the whole family. We have the survivor shirts, and then you'll also have signs along the way. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of opportunities to participate in the walk this year. You can register as a to supporter. You can register as a, someone that's had Valley Fever or survivor. You can, um, kids are free under 12, yeah. but if they want, you want to get your child a, a shirt, that's $10. But you can also re pre-register your dog for $10, and they get a doggy goodie basket, <laughs> so right? <cute. laughs> we all love spoiling our dogs. Let's, really let's, do. let's spoil our dogs and raise awareness. I love it. And so quickly, let's touch on the awareness part of this. What are symptoms and signs you should be looking for if you think you may have valley fever? So the difficulty with valley fever is the symptoms are very similar to the flu or cold, uh, COVID, so respiratory illnesses in general. So what, what our doctors recommend is that if you, if you have respiratory symptoms that last 10 days, okay or you have respiratory symptoms in a negative COVID test that lasts 10 days, or you've been prescribed antibiotics and it didn't help 10 days, two weeks, ask your doctor to be tested for valley fever. And just as important is, as long as you have symptoms, ask to be retested. Sometimes it takes a while for the test to turn positive, so retesting is sometimes necessary. So we encourage patients wow. to get tested as long as they have symptoms. That is fascinating and really good information to know, because I tend to have, I don't know if I have weak lungs or what, whenever I get a minor cold, I'll cough for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's always in the back of my mind, so it's good to know that you need to be proactive and test multiple yes. times if needed. And especially before you get a second course of antibiotics. Okay. As a patient, I received two courses of antibiotics before I was properly diagnosed with valley fever. Wow. So we want to be conscious of using antibiotics in, in, intelligently and smartly. Yes. So. And does any urgent care have these valley fever tests if needed? Any physician or can, can order the tests. Um, so you, but you need to be proactive in asking if you're going to go to an urgent care. Okay. Remember, some, some of the doctors there are maybe new to the area or something like that. So it's always good to be proactive and ask to be tested. Perfect. Rob, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing all that information. Well, thank you for having us. We'll be right back.